Okay, so I am back, and uh, I do want to talk to you guys about something pretty cool I did recently, and that was a week-long trip that I took to Iceland. Well, I guess technically it was nine days, I was there for seven full days, and I'll tell you what, it was probably the best trip I could have asked for. Iceland, if you haven't seen it or haven't been there, it's incredible, and I would highly, highly recommend going. And today, I'm going to be talking about five things that you need to know when you're going to Iceland, and this isn't necessarily for just photographers, it's kind of for anybody because these are some pretty important things that I think everybody should know about Iceland, about getting around Iceland before you actually go there. So we live in San Diego and we took a three and a half, four hour plane ride from here to Minneapolis. And then from Minneapolis, it was like a five to six hour plane ride to Iceland. And uh, the plane ride from Minneapolis to Iceland was overnight. However, we never saw the sun go down. It was always sort of like um, red on the horizon. It was pretty awesome. When we got there, we got a rental car. Now, the rental car was one of the biggest expenses that we were gonna have there on the island, and that's the first thing I wanna talk about is getting your rental car. Now, getting a rental car and deciding what kind of rental car you want um, is gonna be really dependent on what you wanna be doing in Iceland. Are you just gonna be kind of putting around the city? Um, more than likely not. More than likely you're gonna be wanting to go around to all of the popular locations that you've seen on uh, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you like to look at your photos. Um, now, the big thing to think about with these rental cars is um, in Iceland, of course, they have paved roads. It's a normal country, they have paved roads, but there are a ton of unpaved roads and a lot of the locations you guys are familiar with um, or a lot of the uh, kind of cool locations are on some of these unpaved roads. And when I say unpaved roads, I don't mean, you know, driving a quarter mile off the road. I'm talking these are multi-hour drives off road on rocks through rivers. Um, and you might not be prepared for that. And um, I know I wasn't. Um, I wasn't necessarily prepared in the sense that uh, I was kind of expecting that the rental car I got would be able to do this. But when I got there, it was a very, very different experience because I'd heard that, you know, of course you need a four wheel drive car. So we got a four wheel drive car and it was literally the cheapest, tiniest four wheel drive car I could have got. And I thought that the four wheel drive would have been good enough, but that's not really what you need. You need a car that has huge chunky tires and we saw these all the time when we were out there however the price of these cars is incredibly expensive um the car that we got was maybe i don't know a uh, hundred ten dollars a day or something like that not bad at all for a rental car in iceland some of the cars that you need to go on some of these more adventurous trips um are 500 600 plus dollars a day and these cars are meant for off-roading are meant for going through um you know shallow rivers versus mine which was not and i had kind of been planning on doing some of these off-roading things with this car however when i got there i read the rental agreement that i had to sign and it said no off-roading no um if I, if I bought insurance and I got gravel damage on my car, that was not covered. And of course, no water crossings, which makes total sense for a rental company to not want you to cross their tiny car through a river. But that brings me to my second piece, and that is getting around the island. Now we were there for nine days or seven full days and I didn't really have a good sense of how large the island is. You know, of course you can look at it on Google Maps and you see, oh, okay, it's this this long, this tall, you know, I, it should only take me this many hours to get from here to here. That's not the case because especially here in the US, um, speed limits are, you know, like 75 miles an hour and not to mention you speed, you go way over that. In Iceland, the speed limits on their highways is incredibly low. I mean, it's like in the 50s, sometimes even in the 40s, and there's towns that chop up these, these highways into smaller bits. So 
um, when you hit the towns, you're going even slower. So a hundred mile stretch of road might take hours to get across because of the low speed limits. And that's something I wasn't prepared for. One day we went from, uh, what town was it? It was like Hella, I think it was Hella, which is on the Southern coast. And we went all the way to another town called Hoffen, which is on the um, more Eastern coast. And I was expecting it, you know, looking at the map on uh, online, I was expecting it to maybe take like, I don't know, three hours max, which isn't that bad of a drive, but it took like five to six hours of driving. And not to mention all of the times that we stopped, it was an 18 hour day getting to that side and back. So 18 hours from, you know, like seven o'clock in the morning to like, I don't know what time, two o'clock in the morning the next day. It was insane. Um, and this is kind of a, a theme that we ran into constantly out there. Um, a little piece on the Northern Peninsula that should have taken two hours to drive around. It took us all day, um, which isn't bad because there were a ton of things to see along the way, but you have to keep in mind that um, that these trips are gonna be taking a lot longer because there's a ton of stuff to see on the side of the road. Now, um, one of the other problems we ran into was the weather. Now, I knew it was gonna rain there, but I'll tell you, it rained probably like 75% of the time. And uh, that wasn't really that bad for us because um, we spent like multiple days in a location so we could go back over and over again to the same spot to try to get um, ideal conditions for bringing cameras out outside because the last thing I want is to have a broken camera in Iceland. Now, one thing that I was actually really, really worried about was the language. Now, this is the first time I've ever gone to Europe. The only other countries I've been to are Canada, which isn't really that different from the US, and the Bahamas, and that was just for a work trip, and I was at a resort, so it really wasn't like even traveling. Now, this is the first time to a different country, and this is the first time to a country that didn't have English as their first language for me. So I was, of course, very worried that I wouldn't be able to get around. Um, I was gonna have problems at the gas pump. I That's one thing I was really, really worried about. But uh, when I got there, I was actually very surprised. There are a lot of signs in English. Um, everybody there spoke English uh, fairly well. And uh, I, at no point, had any trouble um, communicating. And every time I went to a grocery store, gas station, um, restaurant, they all spoke English. So if that's one thing that you're worried about, don't be worried about it. It'll be perfectly fine if you know you speak English, which I think a lot of people watching these videos do speak English, so you'll be fine. Now, the fourth thing that I wanna be talking about is prices. Now, this is something I hit on a little bit earlier with the price of the rental car, um, because this was the most expensive trip I've ever been on, um, even though we tried to do it kind of as cheap as possible. We brought our own food, we got a cheap rental car. Um, the price of stuff in Iceland is a lot more than, um, than I'm used to here in the, the US. And I hit it on a little bit earlier with the rental car, but this uh, expensiveness extends to basically everything. Um, the price of gas was almost two to three times as expensive as it is here in the US, um, which is huge if you're going on like a road trip. You know, each time we filled up was like 70 or 80 bucks. Um, and one thing I do want to talk about with the gas pumps is they work very differently than they do here in the US. Um, when you go there, you have different options for the different uh, amount of gas you want to put in. There's like, you can put in like, $10 worth of gas, $25, $50, and then there's the option for fill tank, which is, of course, I wanted to fill the tank, so that's the option I picked every single time. But what I didn't realize about how the gas pumps work out there is that, um, it, like, let's say you put $80 worth of gas in your car, it doesn't just take 80 bucks out of your, uh, uh, out of your checking account or whatever card you're using, it puts a $250 hold on your debit card or your uh, credit card. So like, let's say I filled up three times in the last three days in Iceland, that was $750 that was being held for my account. Now, I didn't pay the $750 off the check, but I'm pretty sure that it gets deposited back into your account. It's just a holding fee. 
But if you aren't expecting that and you're filling up multiple times um, very quickly, um, you know, you may want to make sure you have a few thousand dollars in your account that um, you can use for gas while you're out there. Now, the price, like I said, it extends to a lot of other stuff, not just um, the rental cars, gas. Food was very expensive. A small meal for my girlfriend and I, um, like at KFC, and yes, we did eat at KFC, um, was like 40 bucks. So, or even Subway was 40 bucks for a six inch and like a foot long sandwich. That was uh, very, very expensive, whereas that would have been like half the price. So, compared to prices here in the US, I would say double it. And that's about how much you're gonna pay um, out in Iceland. So, you know, expect to spend a lot. Um, now, the last thing I did wanna talk about was how you wanna stay out there. Now, camping may be your thing. You can totally camp. Um, I saw a lot of people camping at some of the campsites on the side of the road. I don't like camping, um, and we didn't have a camper, but camper is also a great option. Now, the other two options are hotels, and what we did was Airbnb. Now, hotels, the hotels out there look incredible. They're like super fancy looking. They look really modern. Um, and then what we did was Airbnb. This is the first time we ever used Airbnb and it was actually a really great experience and I wouldn't have done it any other way. So if you haven't done Airbnb before, you don't know what it is. It's basically like hotels run out of people's houses. Um, and this was our first time using Airbnb and it was actually one of the best experiences I've ever had at like a hotel or staying somewhere. Um, now one of the huge benefits of using like Airbnb versus the hotels is while the hotels are incredible and if you want to stay at a hotel do it because they looked amazing and um, they looked like they were pretty comfy and uh, they looked awesome from the outside too but one of the great benefits of the Airbnbs is that they're actually a lot more spread out so a lot of these places that you're going to are in very very rural areas there's not a lot of stuff built there yet because the tourism industry in Iceland is very new so they haven't had time to like catch up and build hotels and places. So the Airbnb is kind of a good uh, good way for you guys to be able to um, uh, stay in a place that's close to maybe where you want to be. Now I'll show you a video here of a place that we stayed at like in the Northern Peninsula. It was awesome. Um, it was like 150 bucks a night, which is like a standard hotel rate for like a kind of a crappy hotel uh, in the US. And um, it didn't have internet, which wasn't a big deal. We were out the whole time, didn't matter. Um, but, you know, had shower, bed, we had the whole place to ourselves, I had a full kitchen, and uh, the people even had like glacier tours and horseback riding that they offered right there for you as well, so if you wanted to do that. Um, but every place we stayed at was awesome, even the farm that we stayed at, and yes, we stayed on a farm that was awesome. But I think that the biggest thing is uh, that they're spread out and you aren't stuck to just the main cities. Um, and I think that that is a huge thing when you're out in Iceland because like I said, it takes a long time to get around places. So if you can kind of stay in some of these uh, little towns, that's a huge, huge plus. So overall, I would give Iceland like a five star rating. I think it was super, super awesome and I would highly recommend uh, going there. Now, if you have any other questions or something that I didn't mention in this video, you can always ask me down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to, uh, to answer them. But in the meantime, just enjoy some of this, uh, this cool footage I got of Iceland and I will see you guys on the next one.